All right, stocks this morning are down, but it looks a lot different than Wednesday when they were last down. Crude oil's bid big, and gold's run continues. Bonds are rallying too, as it looks like a very different type of risk off. Joining us this morning, Michael Lehman is the CEO and co-founder at Premier Path Wealth Partners. Michael, thanks for being here this morning. Thank you for having me. Nice so this week, hours. appreciate that. Uh, we've had inflation that gave us a little bit of a stir. We had a big bounce back in the AI trade, and this morning we kind of got something totally different altogether. So what do you think drives the action? What's the biggest story for markets in your mind? Well, it's always going to be AI, inflation, and the Fed. I think we get too wrapped up, though. Yes, we had a headline 3.8, 3.5, but, you know, it was really 0.1 um, uh, difference, and we don't really get wrapped up in that. You've got to remember that the Fed and uh, the market really are, the Fed's really looking about 18 months in advance of where they think interest rates or where they think uh, inflation is going to be. So I think it gives them a little bit more time, just as everyone's been talking, that's kind of the consensus. I think... Uh, 75 basis points, I think, is where the Fed and the market right now are. They probably will pause uh, May, June, and that's, we'll see how data looks, but uh, likely reevaluate that in the summer and the fall. But I think, uh, yeah, um, right now with uh, interest rates where they are, we know the consensus of the AI and the mega stocks are, uh, are rebounding quickly. When you talk with clients, uh, Michael, what do you hear right now? What are folks' questions that determine whether or not they put more money into the market or take money out? I think uh, um, most of them are concerned about the headline news is the geopolitical risk right now, because I think a lot of the economic news is actually relatively positive. Of course, there's two sides to the story when you talk about unemployment. Yes, it's low, but some people are experiencing different things. But the consumer is still spending. Um, retail sales are good. Um, so overall, we're very positive that way. I think consumers feeling okay, but a little nervous, obviously. Geopolitical risk, I think, uh, is out there. Um, listen, uh, of the last 250 years, I think we've been in conflict 240. So somehow we get through that. But I don't think there's been enough people around to uh, fully evaluate uh, what could happen potentially in the Middle East. So I think that's on people's minds. And they're kind of happy staying in cash. Uh, um, obviously, with 5% plus uh, uh, returns there, we're positioning our fixed income in uh, really a barbell approach. So uh, we have uh, half of the money out in the intermediate range, uh, uh, three to seven years, and then the cash. So no matter which way the market goes, um, you know, we can uh, get a rally on our intermediate piece of the portfolio, or we can put money to work with our dry powder. So on, on the fixed income side. Like that. As uh, we get a breakout in rates again, that's pretty much been the main takeaway from this week uh, as the 10-year yield pushes higher, the two-year yield joining in as well. We're getting uh, now some pretty juicy yield, but apparently not juicy enough for anyone to show up at our bond auction. Uh, but are there households still that will look at, you know, uh, the closer we get to 5% and start to salivate just for that as fixed income? Yeah, I mean, we tend to be strategic and, and longer term in our fixed income portfolio. I will tell you that we um, we lean into treasuries. We find that, you know, of the 29 last bear markets, uh, uh, 27 had a positive return there. So from a diversification tool, we lean in there. Mortgage-backed securities we've been adding to. Uh, primarily, um, you know, you're getting a better yield and the uh, uh, prepayment risk isn't really there when the average mortgage rate is 6.8 percent and 99 percent of everyone out there has a, a a mortgage less than that that's an area that we're there we're staying away from the credit side of things uh, it's primarily a duration play and then obviously uh, on the equity we can talk more about that but uh, um, we're still optimistic uh, uh, from an equity play at least uh, over the next uh, 12 to 18 months there's likely a correction um, coming up uh, through the summer, but uh, but yeah, we're we're optimistic. I mean, just think about it. Uh, we are one and a half year into this current bull market, which is up fifty percent. The average bull market is three and a half years. So, uh, um, and if the bull market ended, it would be the shortest bull market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that stat. Uh, hey, Mike. Uh, thinking about stocks to get into the equity side of the portfolio when you're optimistic. How do you express that? Do you feel okay about indexed investing with 
concentration the, the way it has built around the semiconductor group? Or do you want to go and diversify through some of the so-called value stuff? Or is that where it gets a little bit more risky? So we're using both. Um, uh, we're not running away from the AI story. We think that's in the early stages. So we will index toward that. So 60% of our core portfolio is going to be in market-weighted um, uh, sectors. So you're going to have that exposure there. Now we have some factors that override that. We have a preference for companies with higher return on equity. So we're not running away from that. We think that has a lot of legs to glow, but go. But I just said that you know that's about sixty percent. When we're rebalancing, which we are, when we see um, it's gotten above um, uh, some of our market neutral areas there, or um, we're adding new money, um, we're not adding to that area. So we're not running away from it, but we're not adding to it. We think there's a lot of opportunity in the four hundred and ninety three other stocks out there, and uh, valuations are much more attractive. Uh, so if the S and P's at 21, to our mag stocks are at averaging probably 28 plus. Um, we're seeing good valuations in uh, industrials, healthcare. Um, uh, you know, 17 times. Uh, we're excited about that. I think with the manufacturing coming back to the U.S. Um, industrials, uh, there's a lot of good spaces there for attractive valuations there. Think about it, we have to worry about uh, um, wages. They're pushing into robotics, and uh, we think that's a good space to be. Okay. So well, you're not afraid to take part in the tech trade. It seems like uh, there are a few sectors you like as well, healthcare, industrials, groups that uh, can also take part in uh, our kind of steady economy, or do they have secular uh, type of growth in there as well? I think they're unique. I, you know, uh, we're not adding, um, but we're still maintaining, as I've pointed out, in the information technology and communication sectors. But we love industrials, not only for the valuation that we can find in some of them, but we think the growth opportunities there. Healthcare has always been a steady piece of the portfolio. It tends to be, uh, I think there, there's great uh, growth opportunities, good valuations, but it tends to also have a defensive piece to it um, when we get pullback. So those are two areas that we're adding new money to. Okay. And uh, Mike, uh, lastly, when you look for other uh, portions of the portfolio outside stocks and bonds, any type of alternatives? Uh, what about like a gold that's been going wild here? Is there a role for that type of stuff? So um, we'll have a small amount of uh, commodities. Uh, we haven't been big on the gold play, despite uh, um, missing most of that. Um, I would tell you on the alternative states, depending on the client, we put it needs an allocation. Um, we certainly are leaning into certain areas of the alternative space, um, anywhere from 10 to 25 percent, potentially with some of those clients. In real estate, I think you need to be selective. Um, we're looking at sale leaseback uh, deals we think are very attractive uh, uh, there and uh, private equity. Um, and once again, uh, you can't throw the baby out with the path water. You have to look. There's a lot of money over there. We're seeing the concentration and the reduction in stocks in the public market and the opportunity in the private market. So those are two areas, uh, sale leasebacks on the real estate and uh, in private equity that uh, we're looking at. Okay. Uh, Michael, thanks for your time. I'd like to walk through the portfolio structure and some good thoughts here on how to uh, uh, build it around uh, potential incoming corrections, but strength and optimism overall. Appreciate your time. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Oliver. Absolutely. Michael Lehman, Premier Path Wealth Partners.